Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Marine X back at it again. And listen, Forbes put together this list. They seem to do it yearly. And it gives me a lot of like scammy search engine optimization type of vibes. They call this the best folding pocket knife for 2022. And they put together this list, a bunch of super popular knives. There doesn't really seem to be a rhyme or reason of why they came up with each specific category. It just kind of seems like they were winging the categories and they came up with a list. So I want to talk about you know, do I agree? Do I disagree with the list they came up with? And should they even consider something different for some of these? Because they seem to be a little bit off. Now, they're going to start off with what they say the best overall knife, which is the Benchmade Bug Out. Now, I will admit the Benchmade Bug Out is an awesome knife, but it's not like this super old knife, super old timey knife that has years and years and years of like longevity and testing. I think they came out with the knife in 2017 it's been super popular it's i mean it's been wildly popular mostly because of its lightweight but there's a lot of flaws in the bench may bug out and i don't even know how they came up with like their rhyme or reasoning for things so i have here the bench may bug out this is the original color that the bench made was offered in in this blue color and it was really designed to kind of be for those hikers i have it here in a combo edge and I have a bunch of other bench maids that we'll talk about. I mean, a super light uh, knife coming in at 1.9 ounces. So, you know, I will admit it's it's a it's a nice knife. It has a super very good grind, which makes it super slicey, which is one thing that people like about it. And but it does have its I mean, it, it kind of has its flaws. First off, it that give right there that you see, you know, it's susceptible because of the actual handles themselves right now the bench made is coming in let's just see we got there for pricing i mean on amazon it's coming in at 147 dollars and that's about where it comes in at other places as well i think the msrp is 124 but that's kind of i mean best overall knife they don't give any parameters to what makes the best overall knife they just kind of say you know it has a a great length of a blade now, if you are going to think about getting the Benchmade bug out, I'm not going to say it's a horrible knife, anything like that. You know, there are some more upgraded versions that I would consider. They do have the Benchmade. I think this is the 535-1. This is the one with the carbon fiber scales on it. So it doesn't have that give on it. So, you know, once you have this thing open, there's not that same amount of freaking give that you have to worry about. It's not happening here this also has the upgraded s90v steel on it still has the same grind so it's still going to be a good slicer this thing's probably coming in over 200 dollars you know we also have the bench may bug out with the aluminum scales this has the m390 great action on this as well but once again if you get it with the aluminum scales you don't have to worry about that flex so i, I mean i don't know the rhyme or reason why they have the bug out as listed as the best over i guess other than the fact that it's insanely popular this is the mini bench made bug out still has that same issue with the flex in the middle still super lightweight if i you know if you're trying to think about best overall if lightweight is your is something you're going with for best overall then the original bench made bug out probably is a just a good way to go i mean it's coming in at less than two ounces super lightweight it's a super popular market for being able to upgrade it after you purchase it. But if you're looking for something that has more utility, in my opinion, and if you don't mind the weight factor, I would look at the Griptilian or the Mini Griptilian. The, the Benchmade Griptilian and Mini Griptilian, it's not going to be as slicey as the, uh, the Bug Out. Of course, the grinds are different on these two. You can see the grind on the actual Griptilian. So, you know, it's, this thing's not gonna be a freaking apple slicing monster or anything like that. But in my opinion, the Griptilian is, is better at taking a beating. It doesn't have any flex at all. The regular Griptilian is the same way. And I just think that it's a really well-made knife and you can usually snag these as long as they're in stock, 99 bucks or so for these things. Or you can get the regular Griptilian. I don't mind banging on this thing, abusing this thing. I can get up on the knife pretty nicely which is something i like as well you also have the spider codelica 4 which is in my opinion it's a pretty good knife as well and this is a super slicey knife i mean it 
completely. You can use it for it for that if you don't mind the bulge. It's a, uh, in my opinion, it's just overall good knife. And you can use this a number of different ways. It has a really good pocket clip on it. The scales are really good. Spider Co. Delica 4 is coming in at $84.99 right now. And people love this thing. Flat ground, lightweight, super great knife. The Benchmade Mini Griptilian is probably a little bit more pricey because it is just harder to get your hands on. Let's see what we got here. Mini Griptilian. And then they have the mini griptilian for 156. I like the mini griptilian just a little bit more for those circumstances. Now, this is what they call the best overall knife. They don't give any pros or cons or why or how they came up with this selection. I mean, if I go to articles that they did a couple of years ago, mind you, the Benchmade bug out came out in 2017. They had a the best pocket knives for every occasion in August of 2019. So they have the everyday photo knife, the Benchmade Barrage, which is a combo edge. Is if that's something you're you're down for, then so be it. But you got to be careful with a combo edge if you're trying to slice and getting your items caught in a combo edge. There's no reasoning for why they shifted from 2019 the best everyday folding knife from the Benchmade Barrage to the bug out other than in my opinion probably popularity i mean if people are searching for benchmade bug out best knife or whatever it's going to pop up coincidentally everything on their page is linked up with freaking amazon links or something similar to that also if you're getting good value out of this video make sure you hit that like button to let you two know they need to share this with other people so the next one they have here is the best budget pocket knife now the kershaw leak has been inc incredibly popular kershaw and their brand of knives have been popular with their speed safe technology the 47 dollars. so the kershaw leak is relatively nice little pocket knife it does have kershaw speed safe technology so the little flipper here but the leak is not necessarily in my opinion a overall like banger of a of an edc knife because it's not really slicey, right? This thing's not really going to be the go-to for slicing up a bunch of stuff or that type of utility. And also, it's great for actually for puncturing. It has a freaking awesome edge if you want to have something that's going to be really good at puncturing. But it's not super slicey. $49 is not a bad price. But if your hands are wet, if the knife is wet, this thing becomes almost impossible to use safely. I personally would probably look at his brother here, which is the Kershaw. This is the Kershaw RJ Tactical. This is not a made in America Kershaw, but if your goal is to have a relatively, you know, budget friendly pocket knife and it's a flipper, because I guess that's what they were going for. It doesn't really explain on their website then you got to consider the RJ Tactical. I think it's way easier to carry this because of the actual milling that's on the actual handles themselves. It gives you a better grip. You can get up on the knife a lot better on this one. You can actually put your thumb on it. It's a better slicer. It does have a, a different grind than the actual, the leak itself. The leak's probably a better puncture, but for overall utility, this RJ Tactical is just something that you got to take a look at. And it's only 28 bucks. And in my opinion, I think that you can get more utility out of the RJ Tactical. I would even consider getting the Voistead or the Voice Seed. Maybe I'm pronouncing this wrong. The Nightshade. It's a freaking odd looking knife. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's a flipper. Has G10 handles. It has a 154 CM steel. It's $69, so a little bit more pricey than the leak, but I think this thing here is going to be a better slicer and it's going to be something that you can get up on. In my opinion, you can even get your thumb on here as support if you're trying to slice boxes or whatever the case may be. And then they move on to the best lightweight pocket knife and they bring up the very popular James brand, the Redstone. Now the Redstone, I don't personally own the Redstone, but I do know that the Redstone they have it here as being 1.8 ounces. I'm not sure how accurate that is. Okay, so yeah, according to Blade HQ, which is super accurate, they have it at 1.9 and Blade HQ has the bug out at 1.85. So if you're trying to argue that the best lightweight should be the Redstone, I don't know if I would agree with that. First off, the combo edge is going to make it difficult to 
to sharpen that blade. When you look at the bug out, it's really made to be lightweight, have that lightweight feel to it and to be a slicing beast. Now the grind on the redstone looks like it will be a good slicer. Just to simply point out the lightweightness, once again, kind of gives me the vibes that Forbes is going for the SEO, the popular, you know, you throw it in Google, this article pops up, you click their link, you know, it takes you to a, a relatively popular website for it. I would argue that if you're looking for something that's lightweight, I would probably lean on the Benchmade bug out in this case, where if you still want something that has the combo edge, you can get the Benchmade bug out that they just recently released in the combo edge. It still weighs less than the Redstone. The blade is longer. I think that it's easier to use and it's easier in the aftermarket to, you know, to modify this thing and to have it in the aftermarket versus the Redstone. Next, they have the best pocket knife for camping. They come down with the spiderco tenacious i don't know how they came up with the tenacious other than the fact it's very popular the spiderco tenacious is coming in at 50 bucks i just don't really correlate the spider spiderco tenacious with like camping now for camping purposes i lean on something that i can beat on bang on and it's not that big of a deal so for me personally i like the benchmade mini adamas now, the blade itself, I think it's just more durable for the fact that in camping situations, sometimes you are banging on stuff with logs. You need to get up on a blade really well. I'm not just sure about that with this Tenacious. I don't know what about it would lead you to believe. You know, it's super similar to the Delica 4. The blade is a little bit different, but, you know, nothing about this says take this camping with me. Um, it does purely look like a slicer. I'm not really sure the utility of that knife. Whereas if I can have something like this or a buck knife, I think we'll have a little bit more utility for me. I don't know about that tenacious comment down below. Let me know if that's something that will be good for camping. If it's not comment down below, I would love to know. Now, jumping back into the Ford's article, once again, I'm still like the scammy vibes, but there's some good things about it where they just lean on things that seem to be reliable. Once again, they go with a reliable hunting knife with the timeless style. They go with the Buck 110 folder, $74.99. I don't personally have one here, but when it comes to me for hunting knives, I wouldn't carry the Buck 110. It's a nice, beefy knife. It fits in the hand well. I have a buck 112. I have a buck 341. Buck makes great knives. But the thing about this, having the brass on there, that's going to patina. If that's something that you want, then so be it. This is a type of knife that you're going to avoid getting wet. And when I hunt, I usually want a knife that I can use in multiple scenarios, especially if I want to, maybe I just put down an animal and I need to immediately to dispose of the guts or the, the innards of the animal. I prefer a knife that has more jipping on it, has better handles. And so for me personally, my favorite knife to take hunting, and I also don't care about the size. So if size is no issue, then the bitch made Crooked River is by far my favorite to take with me. Big beefy knife, has wood scales, looks great has this awesome jipping, which, you know, Benchmade carries over from their whole hunting line, which, you know, identifies and signals that this is a part of that line, has great thumb studs, big beefy, pretty, it's a decent slicer, and but it's really good when it's time to actually start the processing for an animal, making uh, kindling. Oftentimes when I hunt, I tend to sleep by one of my tanks on the property. So this is one of those big beefy boys. I recently picked up the mini Crooked River, which I have not taken hunting yet. Smaller than his big brother here. Same concepts, same uh, jipping going, going down the actual handle itself. The same type of concept. If I want something smaller in my pocket, this is something I usually carry in my bag because this is a big boy. Something smaller in my pocket still has that same grind on it. You know, a decent slicer or the Benchmate North Lake. Now, this is probably my favorite small EDC pocketable knife. Carries once again all the way down the scales. You can really get up on this knife. That's what I love about it is way up here on the front. If I need to get up on this knife and really use it in an EDC situation, EDC situation I can put my thumb there, get up on it, safely keep my index here, get my thumb there, and I can use this. And so 
I prefer something that has a little bit more utility. No offense to the Buck 110. It's a timeless knife. You usually have to carry that in its sheath. You're carrying that on your belt. These are easier to use and to deploy one-handed versus the Buck 110. Now, I don't know if they chose that because, once again, popularity. Everybody knows that. Someone's going to be Googling it. So the next thing they have here is the best pocket knife for fishing. Now, this is the Victorinox. This is literally their fisherman. Now, I don't have the fisherman, but I'm sure that this is going to be great for a fisherman. This has a bottle over. It has flathead screws. It has a fish scaler. I, you know, arguably, this would probably be a good knife for fishing. I don't know where this category came from. I guess, you know, if someone's out looking for a good fishing knife, this is probably going to be something that's going to be worth it. This thing coming in, let's see how much they have this listed for. 31 bucks. Sounds like a pretty decent deal for a fisher. So next category they have is the best pocket knife for self-defense. Now, this is the Spyderco Civilian Signature. Now, I don't have a clue how they came up with how this was the best pocket knife for self-defense. First off, it's $243. Now, it is shaped like an extended claw. It is going to be decently, you know, a good knife when it comes to self-defense. I don't own it, but me personally, when I carry knives for self-defense, I carry, I prefer to carry something This is going to be less fail-safe. So I like to carry fixed blade knives for self-defense. So one thing I like to carry is the se this is the kandari or the kanduru or however you pronounce this thing this is going to be something for for me personally when you having something that's for self-defense you want something that you can get up on and you can use to actually slice poking is not as important as slicing whenever you're trying to do self-defense people can take pokes adrenaline and they won't even notice it but when you slice you produce more blood, you usually are able to get yourself out of a situation more quickly. This thing's coming in at $73. If you want it with the scales, you can get the version that I have, which is the more tactical version, which is $54. And it comes with a sheath. If your goal is to puncture, if puncturing is more important or whatever the case may be, then you can look at getting the sock P by Benchmade. Now, this is really good for holding in the hand slipping a, a finger within this hole back here using this to get yourself out of a different situation you can use it for slicing but it's really good at puncturing next on their category is the best tactical knife now the best tactical knife i love the spider co pm2 171 dollars they don't really explain how they came up with tactical and it being the best they explain that it's a good tactical knife and it's good for opening stubborn boxes but you can take it or behind covert in enemy lines. I don't know how they got to there. So, you know, I have the PM2 here. It's a nice, fantastic knife, but I would probably say that this is better suited just for an EDC knife versus a straight up and down, you know, tactical knife. First off, this bump, if you're trying to be tactical, this pocket clip is huge. Of course, you can get a smaller pocket clip. But if you don't really care about that, you know, this bump, if you're carrying this in your pocket, it's going to be harder to get your hand in your pocket. But if the, neither one of those are an issue, I don't know what about this is tactical. You can't hit this. You know, it's not really preferred that with Spartacle knives that you can hit this with a log or anything and use this in the use case. You can't stick this in a door jam if you're trying to pry open a door. It does have a lanyard hole down here, but it's, you know, the lanyard won't allow for this to stay as flat as I would like if I was trying to put a lanyard in here, the lanyard hole that, that, the whatever you're putting here paracord or whatever is going to protrude and then also you get that price of 171 dollars if you're already looking to spend you know a pretty penny which now these things are 184 dollars now if you're already looking to spend the big bucks on a tactical knife i would want something that has a much bigger blade on it a, a beefier blade i'm not worried about slicing i want something that has a lot of poking power so I'm looking at the Gerber Auto 06 Tanto. Now, this is actually issued by the Marine Corps for years and years and years. Big, beefy knife. This thing comes in at 180 bucks still today. S30V steel has a button lock, has a safety feature on it. It is made in the USA, uh, but it has a great lanyard hole, which is more uh, subdued. So if you put 550 cord in there, it's going to be more flush with the rest of the the knife itself, this is just 
really well made gives absolutely no give to the knife itself it can hold up to just anything i've had this knife for probably close to 12 years and it works really really well much beefier in size when it comes to the blade itself if you look here you can see that gerber and just something i would be more willing to beat on if also we're still saying that money is no object then the bench made the big boy the bench made adamas is something that you have to consider as well 3.8 inch blade big beefy boy here something that you can get on hit on with a log big full handles here you can actually reverse the pocket clip land your hold is similar to the spider coast something that was something that's frowned upon a little bit but still overall about 252 bucks i think that this is a great more tactical knife than the spider co pm2 this is truly am uh, ambidextrous so you can use it with both hands and i mean this is just something i think is going to be good in a bug out bag a hunting bag maybe not in your pocket it's kind of freaking humongous when it comes to something like that i mean if you look at the mini adamas it's much smaller than it i would probably be more more prone to keep this in my pocket but if i'm going to be using this in camping situations tactical situations i would much rather want to have the big boy versus having a spider code pm2 now if i want something on the more slick and sleek side i would probably look at the benchmade bailout now the benchmade bailout now once benchmade had a hit with the bug out they started coming out with other knives which were similar to that the benchmade bailout is one of those knives that it still gives you a lot of slicing power but it's more tactical in nature. The scales just come are more premium coming right out the box. Don't give as much give. It still has an axis lock on it. Once again, it has that more subdued lanyard hose. So if you do put some 550 cord in there, it's going to be more flush with the scales themselves, with the handles themselves. This has a glass breaker on the end, which I don't know how important that is to you. This thing comes in about $234 but it has M4 steel on it, which is gonna be really good for keeping its head. It's bench made, so good quality, well made. If I had to take a pick from all this crap that I got on the table in front of me right now, if I just had to go with something, I want something that's slicey. Now me personally, I'm probably gonna go with the bench made bug out 535-3. This comes with the carbon fiber handle, but I like that because it is a lot more durable. It has a little bit more forgiving. And I just really enjoy the, the upgraded S90V steel on it. And this is something that I can heavily modify in the future. If you go with a regular Benchmade, and of course you decide that you're going to upgrade it with the carbon fiber, you know, once you start doing all those type of modifications, let's see how much this is on Blade HQ right now. It's $279 on Blade HQ. If you just got a regular Benchmade, and you modified it with carbon fiber, you're gonna get close to that 280 mark and you're still only gonna have S30V steel. So me personally, I would probably go with, if it's just my one and done best overall knife, something super slicey, something I can use in multiple situations, I'm probably gonna go with the Benchmade 535. The, the carbon fiber 1.48 is even lighter than the regular Benchmade bug out and this comes in at 1.85 this comes in at 1.48 just super lightweight so tell me your thoughts man what do you think is the best overall knife for any of these categories does forbes have it right is it kind of scammy or they're just kind of grifting seo whatever the case may be comment down below i would love to know your thoughts and listen if you're not a part of battalion hit that subscribe button we would love to have you a part of the battalion if this is your first time for stopping by thanks for stopping by for everyone else we'll speak soon